Hi, I'm James, and today you're joining me because recently I have been looking at a couple of Dell laptops, the 5620, based around Intel's Alder Lake U and the Core i5 1235U processor with Intel Iris Xe graphics, and the very similar but smaller looking uh, Dell Inspiron 14 5425 which has AMD's Ryzen 5 5625U Barcelo processor in it. And so these laptops have very, very similar uh, thermal behavior and very, very similar internal components, same memory architecture and so on. And so I am taking the opportunity to take a look at these to see how performance compares between these two different competing pro processors and which one I think is the best choice if you are shopping for sort of that mid-range Ryzen 5 Core i5 laptop at the moment. So without further ado, let's take a look at how these two chips compare. So looking first of all at Barcelo, and while this was technically launched in January 2022, really this is in many ways a year old product based on the Cezanne APU which came before it. Barcelo is a very, very light refresh of this, bringing just a small increase in the boost clock over the 5600U that came before it. Uh, this is also a much more traditional processor than what we will see from the Intel chip in a moment, in that we have, in this case, a single CCD in the 5625U, that is with six cores enabled, and then on the graphics card side, seven of the eight compute units enabled as well. Contrasting this on the Intel side, we have a slightly more radical design where we have the combination of, in the case of these U-series 15 watt chips, a pair of what are known as P-cores based on the Golden Cove architecture, and then eight E-cores, which are based on Gracemont. And this means you effectively have a combination of your traditional core processor and your more Atom or Celeron Pentium silver based cores, uh, which are designed for more power efficiency. And so first of all, looking at the CPU side of these chips, and what we can see is despite their different arrangement of cores, both chips have 12 threads available. In the case of the Ryzen, this is six cores, all with simultaneous multi-threading. Whereas in the Alder Lake U chip, you have two of the Golden Cove cores with hyper-threading, giving them two threads each, whereas the sort of Atom-derived Gracemont's cores do not have hyper-threading or SMT enabled or available to them, and so only deliver eight threads. We can also see with the P and E cores that there is different base and boost clock speeds available to these cores, whereas on the Ryzen 5, the clock speeds are of the same effectively for all of the cores on the chip. The Ryzen has a somewhat larger level 3 cache, 16 megabytes versus 12 megabytes, but does not support the DDR5 memory, which is available for these Alder Lake U based chips. That being said, our test systems are both DDR4 3200 based, so there is no memory difference between them as tested. Finally, the base power consumption for these is 15 watts, although with its boosting under certain conditions, it does exceed this on both chips. To a similar extent in this Dell, typically up to around 30 watts for short times and then reducing towards that 15 watt limit. On the graphics side, the Ryzen 5 5625U continues using the Radeon Vega based GPU, which has been in use since the Ryzen 2000 series of chips in one form or another. The Core i5-1235U carries across the Iris Xe graphics, which was introduced on the 11th gen chips. Manufacturers do not yet appear to have started shipping any of the 15 watt U series Ryzen 5 or 7 6000 series of chips which use the RDNA 2 GPU, so unfortunately we aren't able to test any of those yet. 
What that means, however, is despite quite different configurations with uh, the Alder Lake U chip having a greater number of ALUs, but the Ryzen 5 running at higher clock speeds on the GPU, the theoretical peak performance of them is incredibly close in terms of single precision processing power. Obviously, this isn't the perfect metric to judge these things on, but it's a very useful comparison point here because they come almost within 1% of each other in this metric. The advantage slightly to AMD, but really the thing to do is look at the performance in actual games and see how they differ because drivers and other factors can play a huge part in this. So starting off with our CPU focus tests, and first of all, we have 7-Zip. This has a built-in benchmark, which analyzes the processor's performance in file decompression and compression. And we see that here we have a fairly large advantage for the Ryzen, the final result coming in more than 20% higher than that of the Core i5. Next, we have Cinebench R23. This is a test which normally favors AMD, but we see that with the combination of single and multi-threaded test, we actually have a mixed result. When we look at the single threaded performance, the Alder Lake U P core running the test single threaded actually takes around about a 10% advantage over the Zen 3 core. But when we go to the multi threaded test, which utilizes all six or 10 cores and all 12 threads on both processors, this then gives us a fairly substantial advantage for the Ryzen 5 in the region of almost 30%, certainly over 25. Um, I have sped up the footage for this because this is a 20 minute test, but when you're running the 10 minute multi-threaded test, you actually get a whole extra run in, in that 10 minutes on the Ryzen. Lastly, on the processor side, and we have Geekbench 5. On this, we see again that the Alder Lake U takes a victory in single threaded performance, this time less than a 10% margin, but it also takes a very narrow multi threaded performance victory as well. Now, this was within variance. I did see runs on the Ryzen that were above this result, but the recorded run is what I'm using, and that came out just a fraction below the i5-1235U. So in this case, I would really call it a draw, certainly on the multi-threaded performance and just a small victory on single-threaded for the core i5 here. So looking at the results overall, and what we can see is that on the whole, the Ryzen 5 is in anything multi-threaded, either equal or superior to the core i5-1235U here. Where we do see victories for the Core i5, they are generally small and in single threaded performance. And I did also note that when I tried to run PC Mark 10, it refused to run on the Core i5 1235U for me. With that in mind, I'd be calling this a victory for Barcelo. The Ryzen 5 5625U consistently offers excellent performance. And while the improvements to the scheduler in Windows 11, we might see some of the rough edges sanded off of the i5-1235U's performance, that is very much speculative. Moving to gaming testing, and we are starting with Borderlands 3, running at 1080p to our capture card, but with a 50% render scale, so effectively 540p and the low detail preset. Here we can see that the Ryzen 5 with its Vega graphics has a pretty substantial 14 frames per second higher average frames per second count. This is getting towards 50% higher than the Iris Xe is managing in this test and does make the difference between being consistently over 30 frames per second and regularly dropping below it. For Cyberpunk 2077, we again ran 1080p to our capture card but with the Fidelity FX performance preset for render scaling and a low detail preset. Here we once again see Barcelo taking the advantage, not as dramatically as in Borderland, but with around 20% higher frame rates than the Intel Iris Xe in the Alder Lake U chip. 
This does mean that the uh, Ryzen 5 5625U is sustaining over 30 frames a second on average, but both do regularly dip below 30 frames per second. It's just that the peaks are enough to bring that average up above that. It's a similar story with Far Cry New Dawn. Again, we are render scaling down to 50% or 540p and are using the normal detail preset. And the Ryzen 5 gives us an average of 40 frames per second, generally keeping above 30 frames per second as a minimum, although with the occasional drop below whereas the Core i5-1235U is averaging 32 frames per second with more regular dips below that. This means our frame rates on the Ryzen are around 25% higher than on the Core i5. Forza Horizon 5 with the balanced preset for render scaling and the low detail preset again sees that the Ryzen 5 5625U take a 50% lead over the Iris Xe in the Core i5-1235U and you can see in the side-by-side -side footage here that does give a noticeably more fluid experience on the Ryzen. On the Ryzen you could in fact drop the render scaling lower and go to the ultra low detail preset and start getting towards 60 frames per second, although I don't think it would achieve that fluidly. Godfall is a new test for me, uh, but using the Fidelity FX performance preset and medium detail settings, again we see around a 20% performance uh, advantage for the Ryzen 5 chip here over the Core i5. So we're seeing a pretty strong trend here as we run through our gaming tests. In fact, at this point, I'm almost wondering if the 12th gen in these gaming tests is even keeping up with what I would expect from an 11th gen core chip, and we'll possibly look at that if there is interest in the future. Grand Theft Auto 5 again sees frame rates over 40% higher on the Ryzen 5 versus the Core i5 here. And this is really surprising because whilst Intel may have some weaknesses in drivers, this is not a new game and one which you would really expect them have to have been optimizing for. This should be a best case scenario for Intel, not near their worst case. Hitman 2 brings the Core i5 back within touching distance of the Ryzen 5. It's still one frame per second behind, and that is almost 5% at these frame rates. And it is safe to say that neither of these are really playable at 1080p and the medium detail. The game didn't appear to have any render scaling settings, so I opted to run it at native resolution, but perhaps dropping to 720p or the low detail preset, or perhaps even both, would have been sensible. Finally, in our game's tests, we have Red Dead Redemption 2, and this is a bit of an outlier in these tests in that it is the only one using the Vulkan API as opposed to Direct3D, and also it is the only which shows a performance advantage on the Core i5-1235U over the Ryzen 5 5625U Barcelo chip. Uh, we see through this built-in benchmark test around a 10% performance improvement on the Core i5, so it does show that when things fall in its favour, it can deliver similar or better performance to the Barcelo chip. It really appears that Intel just need to maybe up their game on their driver optimizations, or need to keep tweaking that graphics architecture to provide the best performance over the widest range of titles. So graphing out our gaming results, and you can see the trend here is overwhelmingly that if you have the Ryzen 5 5625U, you are going to see better gaming performance than the Core i5-1235U. There are titles where it is close or very narrowly in the Core i5's favour, but on the whole you are more likely to see consistently good performance on the Ryzen 5. Of course, if you are looking seriously at gaming as your main use for the laptop, then you will want to find something either perhaps with the more powerful Ryzen 7 5800U or some of the discrete graphics card options such as the GeForce or Radeon discrete GPUs or the coming Intel Arc chips as well.
So with all this in mind, what would I choose if looking at a laptop? Well, of these two processors, my pick would be the Ryzen. Um, I have actually been using a Ryzen 5 5500U as my personal laptop's processor for the past year or so, and have been very pleased with its performance and had no real issues. Battery life has been good on it, and in theory that should only improve with the Zen 3 chips like the 5625U, and hopefully even further going with the 6000 chips when they come. The only real argument against them is if the laptop you want doesn't have that choice, if it is only available with Intel 11th or 12th gen, um, then you may have to compromise if you want the particular chassis design or system form factor. But if presented the choice with two identical or near identical machines, I would be picking the Ryzen. I hope you found this video interesting. Do feel free to ask any questions you may have in the comments. Hit like if you found it helpful, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as we post them, and if you'd like to make a contribution towards the channel costs, hit the thanks button and do that there. Thanks for watching.